I honestly, honestly uh, think that Mad Tree makes like pretty much the best beer that I've ever had. I, there's not many places you can go where you don't hear somebody mentioning them when they start talking about new breweries in Cincinnati or local breweries. It's hilarious. I mean, I, everywhere I go, oh, have you tried Mad Tree beer? I'm like, yeah, I, I know those guys, yeah. Uh, Mad Tree is, has done a really good job of getting into uh, pretty much every awesome bar in town. It's totally local, it's great beer, great people, they do so much for the community, and it just, the taste, the flavor is so uniquely Cincinnati, it's perfect. The draw of Mad Tree is huge on a whole other level other than just beer. They just always seem to make the right moves, and I think they've just built a really good spirit around what they do, and more and more people are just uh, catching that sort of uh, fever. And it's really cool to see um, a Cincinnati area company just ex explode the way it has and also help put Cincinnati back on the map beer wise, you know, to get it back to where it should be nationally. I think all three of them are very outgoing, very friendly, and they spend a lot of time at the brewery because they're there all the time working. They're constantly walking around and interacting with guests and they just feel like, they, they make you feel like you're part of the family. People with anywhere from infants to six, seven, eight, nine year olds don't feel bad about bringing you know, their families in here, having beer, their kids being here, um, and I, I think that goes back to community. Positive, it's welcoming. I've never gone there and had a bad experience, I'm sure. I don't think anybody has. I mean, they, they're, those guys are smart as can be. I, I, I've known some of the brewers that they've taken on and those guys are intelligent and passionate people just like they are. I think it's definitely a long haul thing. I think they're, I, I, I think they will take over Ohio as far as being the beer place. I mean, Great Lakes right now is that, as far as size and quantity goes, but I do think that Matry will take that over. And even though they don't come off being competitive, I think at their core, they really are. They want to make, you know, they want to make better beer than anybody else in Cincinnati. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think they are. They're, I think they're doing it. When Jeff and I decided to start home brewing, just thought it'd be fun. About a year later, we met Brady. Brady had been kind of home brewing as well. We became friends quickly because we kind of had the same passions about beer and all. Uh, then we started really kind of talking about, well, we make some pretty good beer. But what if we did this for real? What if we started a business? We sat down and we said, hey, for the first eight to nine months, we're just going to make beer. We'd already been home brewing, doing all grain at this point. So we would basically take our beers. We would go and uh, Jeff and Kenny started this Wednesday night beer of the week club. We would take our beers there. We'd kind of slip them into these blind taste tests. And then we got to the point where we really had about four or five recipes that we felt really good about. And that's when we kind of said, okay, I think it's time to start putting the business plan together. So we spent, I'd say roughly maybe six months um, just putting the business plan together. And it was more us just understanding the industry. I mean, I came from Procter & Gamble. Jeff and Kenny came from uh, Zetron, north of Grumman. So, I mean, uh, none of us had experience in this industry. We all love beer, but we learned the industry very, very quick. So I think, you know, it was more a learning process for us in terms of the business plan. Spent probably 16 months in planning at that seriously planning. I did five, our five-year pro forma statements just to see if it was even financially feasible. Brady's wife came up with the name. We were shooting names around for probably a couple months. We came up with a lot of different names, but we wanted something that hit home to us. We wanted something that touched base with what we uh, agree with that we feel matters to us. I think MAD, you know, goes down to most of these beers we brewed about 20 or 30 times in my basement. Um, we're starting Kenny's basement, then moved over to my basement, and, um, you know, these recipes have been vetted out a lot, you know, like the identity crisis, like I said, probably 20 times. And then the tree, you know, I, I just tell people we like trees. Those two words independently describe us, and together it kind of creates this cool name. By June of 2011, we uh, announced the private offering to raise money. We were debating how to go about it, so we, we did a lot of research. We talked with a lot of venture capital firms and stuff in Cincinnati. We decided we were going to do a friends and family raise, which everyone thought we were crazy. Uh, we hit up friends, family, friends of friends, friends of family, and beyond, and 
Uh, we raised a bit of capital that way. Well, each and every investor has been a big contributor. The family certainly believes in us and supports us. I mean, Jeff's family is out here every day helping us can and, you know, watching his kids. And, you know, Kenny's dad came down and built the, the, the mill room, and, and my, my mother's been incredibly supportive. And by January of 2012, we raised the full amount. Uh, we got the bank loan, so we raised close to, to it was right at $890,000. And we started buying a lot of stainless steel. And then it took us until basically February of this year until we started selling beer. So it was very much um, a slow and methodical process. Our big thing was we wanted to make sure that once we did this, we were doing it right. We had enough money to go through and, and, and put our plans into place, which was canning. We were the first canning craft brewery in the state of Ohio. I think it's great for them. I mean, it definitely kind of puts them on the map. But without the beer that they make, they, everything tastes great. Without that, whether they can or not, it wouldn't make a difference. But I think that canning just adds one more sort of element to you know what they're providing. Um, and the fact that the cans are, are unique. We chose cans for a reason. One of the things is better for the beer. So no light gets into the beer. A lot of times you'll hear stories about skunked beer even where you see like a six pack where the fluorescent light is shining behind it. The back three bottles will be light struck, the top three will, or the front three will be fine. So I think no light penetration um, is the big thing. Um, we believe the seal on a can is a little bit better than what you get on a crown. It's easier to take places that you can't necessarily take a bottle. You're more likely to recycle a can. That, that's something I didn't know about and these guys kind of schooled me on it and I, my perception was that bottled beer was better. The far majority of, of companies seem to bottle beer rather than can it. We want something that's unique on the shelf, something that when people go down to pick up a product, then they see something that is a little bit different on the shelf. We've only got three beers in cans, the Amber Brown and the IPA. Each one of those are a different artist, different illustrator. Found some through friends, some were already friends, and some were recommended you know, by various other friends. The logo was Christopher Daniel. He's a blacksmith, runs a studio uh, here in Oakley. The guys uh, from Mad Tree approached me about two years ago, out of nowhere, sent me an email about maybe designing a logo for them. And they came by with a bunch of samples of different things they'd brewed at home and sat here and plied me with beer and convinced me to draw up some stuff for them. I think I did seven rough designs out of the dozens of sketches and I sent them copies and they asked me to tweak certain ones, and, and then when I got them all done, I brought all seven to them, and they took a while and picked what they wanted. I've done some welding for them, uh, some patchwork things on site, and then built the, the tables that they have in there right now. They actually had a bunch of steel laying around in the building, and they're like, here, this is, you know, we want them this size, take the steel, and I just cut them up and fabricated them, you know, welded them together, cleaned them up, and took them over. I met the guys from Mad Tree, Kenny and uh, uh, Brady and uh, Jeff, I guess about a year and a half ago. And it was kind of interesting, I met them, uh, it, was, it was probably the best job interview I've ever been on because when they met me at the door at Kenny's house, uh, they escorted me over to the dining room table where there were four glasses and six beers. So uh, <laughs> that was part of the job interview, actually sampling their beers. They pulled me in and they had already kind of come up with a logo for it. So what I did is I took that mark and then just kind of like evolved that into the logo. And then we started talking about beer cans and I think we got started about a little over a year ago working on the beer cans. There was about a eight month lead time before we had to go into production and actually print the beer cans. Yeah, I think I went through about 30,000 different uh, <laughs> versions of, of designs and you know the, 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 their cans are their calling cards essentially. Something I've always wanted to do is work on a beer brand and um, design a beer can so it was just like a dream come true for me to to work on it. It's I, I grew up kind of as an advertising art director so as an art director you have to get attention and stand out and within a very crowded category like craft beer you got to find a way to to get noticed on the shelf so just used a style that was just a very contrasty, a lot of colors. If you look at the beer cans, they're they're very non-traditional, um, and but they all have the same kind of uh, same kind of look and feel at the same time. So that in, when designing the cans, it's one of those things where you you, you got to get noticed. You gotta you gotta find a way to stand out. So I think sometimes simplicity does that. 
they had let me know they were looking for something it was you know a little bit darker a little bit spookier and because it's um, psychopathy and it's psychopath they threw out a couple of ideas and um, like this this Rorschach concept was one of them and you know one of the other stipulations is that whatever the illustration was it had to uh, represent a tree with their direction I just kind of went into my studio and started playing around with uh, how to represent a tree in like a, a really spooky way you know what the form would look like and then it, it, would, it didn't take that many hours. Uh, really what took a lot of time was um, working on the process of the ink blots and how to make them come out the way that I needed them to to express the design. Psychopathy my wife came up with. She's a psychologist. We put it out on Facebook. People came up with names and something about psychopathy just fit the fact of, you know, kind of hop in the middle as well. The Happy Amber started out as I was texting Brady, hey, you know, this beer that we brewed, it's a pretty hoppy amber, I think it's pretty good, and it changed it to happy amber, and I was like, huh, that's a pretty good name for a beer. Uh, Gnarly Brown, I believe we had the illustration already done, we were looking for a name, we were like, wow, that's a really gnarly looking tree, and then it just kind of stuck Gnarly Brown. Just the desire for money is, it's not their desire with that you know we're not just gonna make great beer we're gonna help the community um, the community is a huge important piece of what we do the difference between the way that we market our beer and the way that bud miller coors markets their beer is our investment is not necessarily monetarily it's time i mean there's a lot of friday nights where my wife would love for me to hang out at home but we're here talking to consumers or out doing events we're meeting consumers i think that we're each a little bit philanthropic, even though we're in our infancy as a brewery, we like to be a part of the community. So yeah, I love coming up with different ways. I mean, throwing a dollar up on the grate. We're not asking anybody to do anything. People just like to do it. And people actually will take the dollar bill and sign it sometimes and just take it and throw it up there. So we want to make sure that we're connected with the community. We're making sure that we're doing good things for everybody. And you can't really be well-respected or, or highly respected if you're not involved in the community in some way, you have to, I mean, this is your family, you have to be a part of this, you, you have to be involved. So we get a lot of different communities that support us. They're a very strong group of people and they really get behind you when they do. We haven't done much advertising. Um, we've got a lot of good press and, you know, the Inquirer, WCPO has done a lot of stuff. Um, the Ohio Beer Blog, the local bloggers are huge. Um, you know, they've gotten behind uh, the brewery very, very strong. Um, but we'll do, we'll do a lot of charitable things, and we do. We've done a lot of events with the Autism Society, uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital Charitable Fund. We did a big event with them, Cans for a Cause. We auctioned off cans. So we saved 50 cans off the line from the first canning day. We took them all. We got certificates of authenticity, and we raffled them off. Well, they almost always say yes. To be honest with you, I've never heard them say no. And it's just, we'd love to be involved. What can we do for, for you guys to make this more of a community event? and um, that is what they've done. I mean, I can list many, many organizations that they've helped. I think, I think any way that we can use this venue because people are excited about this to either raise awareness or donate money to other charities, absolutely we're on board with that. Michael Macon, who was a student at Starfire, wanted to do something with beer. A friend of ours put us in touch with Starfire and said, would you mind going and sitting in on his, on his first kind of planning meeting? Sure, so we went, ended up going in uh, talked to him about what was going on. Uh, ended up volunteering to make a beer for him, which his event was in June. Uh, we weren't even sure we would have beer available, but we thought, well, let's commit and let's do our best to make this happen. We worked with 50 West on the beer. We collaborated with them. We got together with Mad Tree. We brewed, uh, uh, it was called Wheat Eater. It was, uh, it was like a lighter wheat style beer. Michael came up with the recipe and he sort of uh, told us what to do. I worked on the uh, brewing Beer at the Mad Tree Inn. I, I, I used some regular equipment. And yeah, it was successful beer. It was uh, it was fairly popular. We sold a lot of it here. Uh, people enjoyed it. It's a very light and refreshing beer. His capstone event was at 50 West. Um, I would say we've seen a lot of big events at 50 West, and Michael Macon brought more people here than just about any party we've seen. Everybody drank weed here, and Michael was back there just having a great time, and we loved it. And now that Mike's made those connections with the community, he's actually, he's hosting uh, occasionally at 50 West, and he comes in here and works behind the bar for us. Doing a chef series with some of the chefs around town, 
and the first one was with Mike Floria from Maribel's. They're kind of a semi-permanent part of what we're doing. I mean, you can see the banner up there, so they're here all the time. We use a distributor that distributes Mad Tree. So they were coming in here, we found out they were local, started going down there regularly, and then ended up talking to them about doing food there. Um, they also do some food trucks every now and then. Um, and then we ended up uh, pairing up and doing a beer together. So we called it Flosh. Um, his nickname's Flo. And we brewed it with ginger, lime, and ancho chilies. And so you get a lot of that ginger and lime in there. It's really refreshing. And then you get a hint of spice and, and uh, kind of that raisiny ancho taste at the end. It's pretty intense, and we ended up making about 30 kegs of that. It was a Kolsch style beer. I just wanted a lighter beer that basically would uh, be able to take the flavors that we were putting into it. And we kind of went with the idea of like a light margarita type cocktail slash poolside drink. We really wanted the tap room to feel like it was a part of the operation. Didn't want a wall separating things. Like having the big open bar and you have all the space you can just kind of wander around and check things out. There's no sort of mystery, you know. Yeah, I, I think I think the openness the openness is what makes it local. What they really care about is they know the people who are making it or they know where it's being made or they, they can connect with that process. That's why people are engaged in the business. I mean that that's what local means. It's about supporting your community. It's not necessarily about where the beer is made. It's about the fact that we're a part of the community and we want to enhance the community. And anything we can do to use Mad Tree, the popularity of craft beer, or this business to do that is, is a win-win for everyone. The, the building also fits us. I mean, it's, uh, it, we've got a lot of space in here. We've got a lot of room to grow. Um, the fact that it's so open and that when you're sitting in the tap room, you can see all the, the production facility, that's, that's important to us. It fits the whole kind of... Um, you know, creative aspect that we're going for with this brewery. A lot of their events is uh, family friendly, so there's always like, you know, um, you know, children running around, people performing music. It's just, it seems like a really welcoming, uh, wonderful place. They've got, you know, tables that you can draw on with chalk and stuff, and um, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to have a beer. It's fun to go out there with some friends and play cornhole or something, you know, um, it's really it's nothing like having a really good beer and a really great company and just having some fun and they definitely have an atmosphere that supports that. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons that we're in the tap room so much. I mean, we thoroughly enjoy meeting the consumers that are enjoying our beer. We'd love to get our beer out to as many people that want it. Um, at the same time, we want to make sure that we keep our product fresh and local and that people feel like they're getting the best for their for their dollar when they're buying a, a fresh product like ours. We will do everything in our power to make a quality beer and never let that uh, slip. When we put a beer out there we want to make sure that it's not going to disappoint the consumer and um, we recently had to uh, dump a double batch of our IPA and that was, I, I felt sick that day. It was not a pleasant day, but you know, it, we expect it to happen down the line. Uh, as we're growing as a company, as we're figuring out our system, it, we're gonna have hiccups. The, the new tanks have been, have been awesome. I mean, one, I think, the, the, the few things I think it's done that's been at least important to me is um, out visiting a lot of our accounts. Um, we were not able to supply pretty much 90 to 95 percent of our accounts with the amount of beer that they wanted. Um, so they were constantly ordering less beer than what they could sell and they were all very comfortable with it. I mean they they understand that we're a new business and if we didn't have this demand then they wouldn't want the beer and because we have the demand they want the beer. Um, but it was still good to be able to finally say you know, hey, if there's relief in sight, you're going to get the beer that, that you can sell. And so far, all the accounts have been doing phenomenal with it. So, I mean, that's been, that's been great to see. I think we've worked through most of the kinks, and, and here we are. We didn't plan to buy anything new until, yeah, like I said, year two. And we bought a lot more than we had planned as well. So volume-wise, uh, we're sitting at somewhere around year four of the original plan, I believe. We'll eventually look to expand outside this territory, but 
for right now, I, I'm having a lot of fun just selling the beer here and you know keeping it local. The fun thing has been because of the new tanks, we can now use the smaller tanks to do a lot of fun beers. I, I think each beer, every launch that we do has been pretty phenomenal and then every time um, we come out with the seasonal, those seasonals sell really well. They're one of our top sellers. We've done the Spry, which is the Rye Pale, that was our spring beer. Um, the summer we did Pleasant Wheat. Um, we also did another summer beer, which we might make more of next year, um, which was Daywalker. That was a blonde ale fermented with strawberries. I think it was always the plan to experiment early. I mean, we are a hands-on brewery. It's kind of part of the definition of a craft brewery. Um, and to know that your product comes from those tanks, your product comes from the guys that are standing there doing all that work, whether it's at 8 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock in the morning, we're here working our butts off to get you the beer that you like. When we first start, and I assume with pretty much any project, any business, you have there's a lot of chaos, right? You're still learning how to do everything. You're getting everything lined up. So there's a lot of superhero mentality where you have to, somebody has to stay around and do, do the unthinkable for unthinkable number of hours, right? 18, 20, 24 hours, hell, sometimes 30 hours straight, just trying to make things happen, make things work. Um, and then over time, you start to figure out the process and get things lined up, and and then you start to fall into the groove. Uh, and that's better for the beer and better for, well, everybody's livelihood as well. As a whole, we are about the beer. We're about making a product that we love and that we think that people will enjoy. And whether or not people enjoy it or not, we, we want to make sure that it's a top quality product. Beyond that, I think that we've found ourselves in a great little community that we like to be a part of and we want to make sure that everybody supports each other. Yeah, I mean, this, this for us is, it's a passion and there's a lot of people that are very passionate about what, what they do and I was not passionate about a lot of things I've done in my life and I, I'm sure Jeff and Kenny would say the same. Um, you know, I, I don't think Mad Tree is, inspires people necessarily, but it's certainly inspired me. So I would say, you know, I mean, if it's, you know, if anything that people do in their lives, I mean, do it with passion, be inspired. Don't waste time. If you say, I want to be doing this, do it. I mean, there's... We didn't, we didn't have any special skill set that no one else has. I mean, if anything, we had great jobs that made absolutely no sense to leave. Um, I know when I told my wife, she's like, what the fuck are you thinking? Like, really? Um, I mean, she was on board, but yeah, so don't be afraid to take the leap. Today is a celebration of kind of our first year of existence. It's very important to me because it means that we survived our first year. Uh, we put a lot of work into this and we spent a lot of time coming up with a plan and we blew that out of the water and it's been phenomenal. We've always, for the last four or five years, we've done myself and Jeff, um, and then once we met Brady, um, the three of us in my backyard have done what we call a winter bonanza. This is kind of a continuation of that party, and we're kind of rolling our birthday into it a little bit too. We've invited all the other local breweries, other beers that we've got a lot of respect for, so it's kind of a, a celebration of beer, I guess you could say. I, I, I couldn't even begin to say what I've learned. It's been Every day is a, a new learning experience. I mean, just, there's there's so much. My brain's been overwhelmed with so many things that, that if I could just remember half the stuff that I've already forgotten, that would be probably more than I've learned my entire life. I mean, just, just about who we are and, and 
what goes into making a business happen. It's cool, I mean, it's just uh, to have an idea that we're gonna sell beer and then it become somewhat of a cultural thing for lack of better, uh, better terminology has been really cool. You know, just, it's, they're passionate, we're passionate, and, and being able to, to produce a product that, uh, you know, they can enjoy, it's been phenomenal. And that never really gets old, as, as much as, you know, I mean, you're 24-7 talking to people, which exhausts the hell out of me a lot of times, but to still hear someone say that they appreciate what you're doing and they appreciate the beer, and there's, you know, there's this kind of, there's this bigger thing to it than just beer is really cool.